another episode of Let's Create Games. This time, instead of diving deeper into the code, um, we want to look at libraries. Okay, first of all, what is a library? In the last episode, we already used a library called CreateJS. And think of that as um, software written in the same programming language that you use. And um, this piece of software makes something easier for you. Uh, if you chose the library, right, that is. And um, you can uh, use the code from, from someone else in your own code. And it helps you make things smaller or more transparent or uh, easier to understand. Since JavaScript is a programming language that is very in, that is very hyped right now, there's a ton of li libraries out there. And there are some websites trying to catalog them, like this one, JSTOR. And it has uh, 1,502 JavaScript libraries in here uh, for any aspect that you can think of. And um, you, can, you can search it, but it has categories. And we're going to look into game engines, of course. And you see, uh, as it says here, there's just an immense amount of game engines for JavaScript. And um, what, what is nice here is that you can sort um, the, the, uh, the game engines by uh, tags, by, by features of the engine. And if I click on 3D, then I see the 3D capable and, um, game engines and so on. So let's look at some examples. Since we don't have a specific game in mind for the moment, um, it's best to look at the website and look for features like documentation and for examples and so on. If we look at Enchant.js, then we see there's a JS Fiddle-like life sample thing here, which, which is very nice. And um, this is on a Chrome, uh, um, in, on a desktop computer, but I tried it on, uh, on an iPad um, uh, this morning and it works as fast as you can see it here, which is very nice. We look at the tutorial section, <laughs> then we see we have a, we have an awful lot of of uh, documentation here, which is nice, and it looks like it's fairly documented, and and we can we can use it very much. Also nice is that it has a showcase, and uh, this website uh, NineLeap.net, and um, this is again some sort of JS fiddle for only for Enchant.js, as far as I understood. And if we look at an example, um, we see that it works nicely. Okay, if I screw it up. Okay, that's nice. Let's look at another example. Uh, we are mainly looking at 2D libraries for the moment, and the next library we are looking at is this one, Greensock, or actually Tween Light or Tween Max. Um, in terms of age, this is an old library because it was available for um, Flash already, or ActionScript, and um, they implemented this for HTML5 slash JavaScript, and it works very well. Um, if you look at First of all, if you look at the documentation, it's very thorough, it's very complete and tested. And if you look at the at, at the main example, which is this one, um, I tried this one not only on iOS, but also on Android, and um, it works fast everywhere. It works fast on the desktop and on um, iPads and uh, iPhones, and also on um, Android phones of the last generation, of the second last generation, maybe. Let's look at another one. Next up is Phaser. Phaser is relatively young, but already has some very impressive references, like this one over here. And um, it's also um, open source, like the others two actually, and uh, sports 160 plus examples. Um, again, these are nicely done. You can see um, the actual game, even some some classics here, and um, and you can see the source code of the game side by side. And while we are looking at breakout, and I totally lose, um, there's another 
uh, interesting thing. There's a website that collects breakout examples in in various variations of game engines, um, which is which is a great idea because many people have the problem that we have here: which game engine to choose. So the idea here was to create breakout in all of these game engines and um, look at the source code and, and say, well, how, how, how's the, how's the, how it's written? Is it written in a way that I like and that I get along with? Uh, is it performant? Um, can, can, you, can you see the, the performance in the game? And what are the advantages or disadvantages? This is a nice idea. Okay, let's look at some 3D examples. Um, 3JS from Mr. Doop is um, my favorite, uh, but it's a 3D engine. It's not really a game engine. It's, it only serves the 3D part, but it does that very, very good. And that's why it's featured in many Chrome experiments and in many games that, that you can see in the browser. And um, a disclaimer, I'm on a MacBook and this doesn't have the best 3D acceleration, so uh, you probably will hear <laughs> the, the wind. <laughs> in a moment, so. Yeah, already lost. This game looks simple, but it is not. Okay, I, I, I won't even try it again. So, um, let's look at more examples. Newest kit on the block is Babylon JS. Um, it's from Microsoft, but it's open source, and it also, wow, it has even more examples than, than I saw last time. And I'm going to preload one of the most impressive examples because this is 70 megs. Uh, it will take some time, so I'll be right back. And here we are, and you can really see that my MacBook doesn't have the best 3D acceleration because we are only, okay, so, okay, we're catching up, something like, 15 frames per second, okay, but it's working, <laughs> and you can see that the, the details are very rich, um, this is waiting for the train, <laughs> here it comes. So you see, you see there's even smoke and things like that. And if I really go up, then you can see that this is a very rich, detailed world. And it still works, though just with um, 20 frames per second. But this is, again, due to the fact that this the 3D acceleration is not very good on this, on this uh, machine. Again, I also didn't play around uh, enough with with this library, but um, it's definitely worth a look. And maybe we find time to look into this too. Let me uh, finish by showing some examples for uh, game libraries that represent different game types than standard 2D or 3D uh, games. Twine is an open source tool for telling interactive nonlinear stories. Um, if probably you know choose your own adventure books, you can create these with this tool. Actually, it's, it was a client before, but they have a Web 2.0 interface. Um, and this is alpha, but it, it's working already. And you can create uh, stories with that. And this works by adding these cards. I'd, I'd rather... I'd rather show this in an existing game, like um, this one. This is called Single Dead in Space by Kent Valentine. If you say play, then you see it's mostly text. And you advance in the game by clicking on links. And at some point in time, you... Let's take some time here. This is, by the way, a very interesting story. You should play it. But um, some time in the story, you don't have a linear development like here, but you have choices. 
and you have to like this and um this is the this is branching of this is the branching of the story and um it's 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 um it's it's a very nice way to build stories and it's it's also um this is another example you can also have pictures in there and again here you have multiple choice questions this is a webinar this is a historical um i didn't read it at all so i don't know what the right answer is <laughs> the last one of course okay so you can you can build stories with that you can do um multiple choice question webinars uh, that was twine so if you were into roguelike games uh, we got you covered there's a library called rotjs uh, that you can use to create roguelike um, games if you don't know what that is this is how it looks like it's basically ascii text but uh, with a twist if we start the royal wedding which is the example game then you see that you are the uh, this thing over here and you can uh, walk by clicking the cursor keys and I'm, if I go to to the into into the water, then it says water blocks the way, and I can walk this way and follow a story. And there you can get approached by by thieves. The fun is that if you do nothing, then the time doesn't advance. If you click, then the time uh, or or walk, then the time advances for one um, one unit. Okay, so I think you, you get the picture. So if you're into Minecraft and Minecraft-like games, we got you covered too. The great Max Ogden um, created Voxel.js, uh, which you can use, well, to create Minecraft-like games. Um, let's look at some examples. As you can see, you can walk. You can walk like in Minecraft. Obviously, this is just the um, this is just a demo to show off the sky. Um, I can. You see the blocky terrain from Minecraft, which is nice. Ah, oh, okay. I see. I can uh, switch the the time. That's cool. Okay. Uh, you can see that this is done in 3JS. Type in takeoff, okay. Ah, I see. Cool. Okay. Okay, you see, this is just to show that you can do different things with different game engines, and it depends very much on what kind of game you want to create to choose the library. And um, we're going to choose some sort of games in the, in the next episode, and I hope you will be back. Thank you very much. See you.